What does it take to be an effective leader when there's no one around you to physically lead? This is a question that I explore in an article on distributed organizations for the Harvard Business Review. But I want to take a moment to also talk about it with you. The COVID-19 crisis forced many organizations to suddenly start working from home. And for a while, we were amused by the newness of it all. Online happy hours, family interruptions, and paying attention in endless virtual town halls. For the longest time, we used offices, not just to work, but to project our power and authority. So we had skyscrapers with vast atriums, mahogany lined walls and leather bound books, university style campuses with endless amenities, and of course, futuristic structures that looked like a spaceship from another dimension. With the pandemic, everything changed. Offices were no longer status symbols, they were liabilities. Working from home became the new norm. Even Twitter announced that for those employees that wished, they need never return. Yet as companies started sending their people home, it turned out that the technology of working remote was not the hard part. Much more challenging was being productive when you were in fact apart. In the old world, you could see your team and what they were doing. You could be a good manager just by walking around. And if something needed to be done, you could literally lock everyone in a room until the problem was won. In the virtual world, all of that is gone. Now we need to think about every part of how we interact. Think about all the things that we used to take for granted in the days before, from body language to personal rapport. Some leaders tried to embrace the future by simply repeating the past. Think of all those endless office meetings that made you want to scream, now replaced with endless virtual ones and bored faces on a screen. Before now, who would have thought it would actually be a thing, burning out just by staying in? It doesn't have to be this way. There's a new way to work and a new way to lead. Here are three things that I've learned from some of the world's smartest organizations on what it takes to succeed. Strategy number one, be transparent with data. Here's a mistake that leaders often make. They struggle to delegate because they don't trust that someone without the right job title has the skill or experience to make the right judgment call. Actually, that's not true. Sometimes anyone can make a good decision, even you. What if you gave people access to the data they need? Would this allow teams to be more autonomous and have the space to succeed? Before, only senior leaders had all the numbers and facts. But now there's no time for hierarchy. We need agility, creativity, and the freedom to act. Strategy number two. Document your decisions. When your teams are distributed, it helps to have a record of how things are done. So one of the most important things a virtual organization can do is to document their decisions one by one. Take Zapier, a software company designed to be remote from the start. They built a tool called Async as a log for all of their decisions, a form of collective memory that allows them to coordinate even when they're apart. Their CEO, Wade Foster, told me that Slack is where people talk about work and sometimes joke about memes. But async is where they document and share their work with the rest of the team. Strategy number three, drive data literacy. A good decision will still be wrong if it takes you way too long. The Chief Digital Officer of Mars told me that the pandemic forced them to adopt a faster internal operating speed. If you want to do the same, there's something that your people need. Distributed teams need a common language to communicate and an objective basis to decide. It's not enough just to have a data team. Everyone needs to know how to use data to challenge ideas and question whether things are as they seem. Being a leader in this new era is not easy. It's not about being the first to work or the last to leave, or wearing your status like a badge on your sleeve. Rather than trying to be the boss, consider this instead. What if the way to lead when no one's around is to embrace being data-led? 